the ground. From his end zone. Stretching it for Ellingson, and that's knocked down. Dwight Anderson in coverage. Same sort of throw we saw early on to Andrea Jones where Henry Burris was trying to throw it to his back shoulder and hope that Greg Ellingson would come back to it. But this time Dwight Anderson, who was in coverage on Jones on that play, is in coverage again. This time he won't allow the receiver to come back through his body. So second and ten. Here comes the heat. Steps up and throws, and Bakari Grant, does he have the catch? No, incomplete. Whitney Tareen there, two and out from deep in Ticat territory. Well, and, and when you talk about the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Chris, running the ball more, and I think Ken Austin will probably see this too. Look at how the, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders bail with a lot of their players and leave that hole right there just behind the line of scrimmage. And that's where, if you're going to play against a pass offense, you play coverage first, especially on second and long. But that's where the odd, you know, you hit them quick with a quick hitter or a draw play can surprise the defense. Well, does Josh Bartell have instructions to concede the safety? Third consecutive two and out for the Ticats after the quick start. You pretty much have to. And he will. And steps out to make it a five-point Tiger Cat lead. And the Cats will kick off when we come back. Off after giving up the two points. But we get a decent cover team here. They get some field position back. Sanders and Ferry are back as Kanji with the boot. And Sanders running start. Up over the 35, and now you'll get dragged down. Courtney Steven, another special team tackle. One of the stars of last week's 37-0 win. Rob Bag, top Canadian, and what a comeback game for him. Yeah, 125 total yards a week ago in the blowout in Mosaic Stadium. This one in the fourth quarter. Just flat out ran by Matt Buckner there. And I, I've got a theory on what's happened after two reconstructions of the knees. They put in bionic parts. Rob Bag has got a little bionic parts in his knees, I think. It's working. Corey Sheet bouncing it outside, gets a block. And then gets taken down by Arthur Hobbs. But it looked like that sideline was really opening up for number one. They got a block from Drew Willie. Worked his way around the opposite direction. So it's seven for Sheets. Very open about the pursuit of 2K. Got 2,000 yards on his target. And straight ahead for what should be a first down. See where they mark it as he crosses midfield. There's a running set, running formation where big Dan Clark comes on as a tight end for Corey Sheets to help him out there. He will move the chains and go first down. And they'll leave that tight end set on the field right now as Corey Chamberlain likes to get this out there. Play Dan Clark, who had a touchdown catch last week. Seven for 27 for Sheets so far on pace for just under 2,800 yards. Flagged down. Willie through his reads, and he's got Weston Dressler. There is a flag down. Dressler hauled to the turf at the 30-yard line. Let's find out if this catch will stand. What a reaction catch from Weston Dressler. He's kind of stumbling as he made that cut, working on Delvin Bro. It's like too many men. Hamilton. Illegal substitution. Hamilton. The penalty is declined. First down, Saskatchewan. 24 yard Weston Dressler catch will stand. Play will stand, boy. And, he, and this is Drew Willie just showing you a little of his arm strength here. He puts his ball right on Dressler. He's going to 
fight it off a little bit and has to hook slide, come back, reacts to it, and pulls it down off his shoulder pad. First down, Hamilton 30. Willie looks for G Roy Simon. Got it. Touchdown. Flag down. And does G Roy Simon have his first Saskatchewan Rough Rider touchdown? Pass interference. Hamilton number 42. Yep. A penalty is declined. Touchdown scored on the play. Drew Willie connects with number 81 for his first as a Rough Rider. Runs the corner route. Drew Willie on time allows G. Roy Simon to work himself open, and it was Raymond Brown in coverage. He got away with, or he got called on the hold, which of course will be declined. The 101st CFL touchdown reception for number 81. Closed captioning is brought to you by the Kit Kat Chunky Challenge, where you can win one of three epic trips. Shop at Game 16 playoff games. We were wondering when that experience would start to take over and we would see Saskatchewan start to take advantage of some of the young rookies. Rough Riders with their first lead of the game and the line drive boot. Handcuffs Lamar. He's going to bring it out. And here he comes. Hot footing around the 10 yard line and not much more. Probably should have put a knee down yep. in the end zone after misplaying the kickoff. Yeah, that's a mistake. But let's go back to the touchdown and show you where that experience pays off for G. Roy Simon working one on one with Raymond Brown. He's a three receiver on the inside. That's the trip side of the field. Now watch how he bends in to freeze it in man to man. He's going to bend in here and that freezes Brown so now he can break back to the corner. That little stem where he bends in and holds him now gives him the outside leverage and Drew Willie drops it over his outside shoulder and that's as casual a touchdown catch as G. Roy Simon has made and let's see it. There it is. First one for Saskatchewan. So Touchdown 101 and number one as a Saskatchewan Rough Rider. Injured uh, Hamilton Ticat, and did that ball pop loose on Lindsay Lamar? The Rough Riders all celebrating here. And Lamar getting attention from the medical staff of the Tiger Cats. Well, let's take a look again. There is a challenge, so the Rough Riders the believe. Saskatchewan is challenging the ruling on the field that the forward progress was not stopped and the ball was out and fumbled. We'll review the play. First of all, let's take a look at, at when that ball came out of there. Now, the ref mentioned that the forward progress was stopped or wasn't stopped, and that's what they're challenging. Boy, Greg Newman came across with the shot that I believe is what has shaken up Lamar. Oh, no, that's Levi Steinauer. Huge hit, 62. The ball is the ball was ripped out of the hands of Lindsay Lamar. Never ever hit the turf. After review, the player's progress was stopped. Whistle dead and the fumble following. Ruling on the field stands. First down Hamilton. Of more concern for Ken Austin is the health of Lindsay Lamar. Looks like the training staff is making sure they keep his head very still, and that's keep the neck immobilized. Yes, always an indication they're dealing with neck and back. Looks like they're ready to get him up again. Watch Levi Steinauer come across right there. <laughs> 
So they continue to work on Lindsay Lamar and we'll step out for a moment. There's Lindsay Lamar now sitting up. Looks like he's just about set to get to his feet. Trying to get his bearings again and yep. a hit to the head by Levi Steinauer may have knocked him out. He's still trying to get his bearings before he gets up to walk off so they'll have to go through the entire concussion protocol. But the good news is he's walking and up and moving around so. Is a good sign as Lamar makes his way to the bench. And a big part of Kent Austin's game plan in the rematch here. Four carries for 27 yards and one catch for 17 in the first 19 minutes of the game. So the three back offense you were talking about as Ken Austin has a smile with the rookie running back. Go to two back now and full of C.J. Gable, the USC product, running into John Chick, but finally wrestled down. Good hard run for C.J. Gable. Hey, you mentioned USC and he's got quite the resume when you think about his time at USC. Three years, went to three Rose Bowl games. Got that experience. Go back to 2006 was his first one. That was a national championship when Texas beat USC 41-38. Vince Young was the offensive MVP of that game, but then they won two, beating Michigan in 07, and USC beat, of course, Illinois in 2008. Five for Gable. They empty it for second and five. Six receivers, and the catch is made, and that is Gable with the grab. And a first down, he had a couple of touchdown catches in the opening game of the year against Toronto, but there was a drop that everybody remembers that would have been the winning touchdown late in the game. Makes a nice read here to, to recognize the coverage and, and break away from it, break outside of Weldon Brown there. Weldon Brown was sitting on the inside curl, and he didn't run into him or pass him. He broke out and created a target. A little breathing room for the Tiger Cats. Take to Gable, and now Burris steps up over the middle. Greg Ellingson running near midfield and across the center field stripe into Saskatchewan territory. 30 for Ellingson. Yeah, Ray Williams had a bead right on Henry Burris. I thought this was going to be Ray Williams' sixth sack of the Canadian Football League campaign. Watch Williams here come up the field, but a pump fake fools Williams. And after this play, he actually was limping back to the huddle. He kind of jumped up, slipped there, and he was kind of limping getting back into that huddle. And Prince Miller is down and getting attention. Hamilton, number 82, after the first down had the game. 10 yards, first down. Not sure how Ellingson could make an illegal block after the game when he was the receiver. But, yeah. <laughs> I think they met Andrea Jones, number 89. Well, let's take a look, because, yeah, I don't think you can you can have the ball in your hands and be called for an illegal block. There's Andrea Jones up at the top. Now, he turns around to block on Dwight Anderson. You see Ellingson in behind him. Just holds on just a little bit too long. It's okay. So Miller is up. <laughs> oh, we couldn't see from that angle whether or not he grabbed the jersey. He must have. So it is a first down. Ball back at the 45-yard line. And Carlos Thomas into the secondary. He lines up as the safety here as the defense gets shuffled with Prince Miller. Burris got Sammy Jaguar on a first down catch, and they're back into Rough Rider territory. Sammy 
Eddie Jaguer is, is playing the spot that will be Andy Fantuz as soon as he gets back into the lineup. Fantuz was very close for this week, but Kent Austin decided that they give him another one plus the break, and, and he'll be good from that hamstring. So Jaguer moves into that spot. Second catch for Jaguer, 13 yards. And a tie cat first down at the 52 yard line. Hand off Gable. CJ Gable finds a hole and leaps over the 40 yard line. It's a first down run. It does that in style. Greg Butler, who's been on a roll the last couple of weeks, he's coming up from the safety. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders will rotate these two with Tyron Brackenridge and Craig Butler. But watch CJ Gable just hurdle up over number 28 and get the first down airborne. So Diamond Ferry's moved out to the corner. With Prince Miller out of the lineup. First down, Burris, time, gonna take a shot for Ellingson. He's got it, touchdown. In behind Eddie Russ, and the Ticats regain the lead. Touchdown for Greg Ellingson. Protection on the backside on the blitz from Greg Butler is going to help Burris have time to throw this football. Up over the top, puts air underneath it, and it drops in the bucket to Greg Ellingson working on Eddie Russ. So Russ had moved inside for Prince Miller, and <laughs> Greg Ellingson puts that defense to sleep. Kachi adds the extra point. That's a 98-yard touchdown drive for Hamilton. Six plays. Capped by the 38-yard touchdown. Pass and run to Ellingson. Well, an answer. It looked like Saskatchewan on the G-Roy touchdown. G-Roy Simon touchdown. We're going to grab some momentum. And when they have over the first four weeks, they have taken that momentum and turned it into four wins. But for the Hamilton Tiger Cats because of game planning. They've seen Craig Butler come down and come on these blitzes and saw it a bunch last week. This time, they bring in receiver Bakari Grant to pick up that blitz. He takes Butler on the backside, and now the, the bunch over here is how Ellingson's going to get open because it's tough to get in that trails position as he makes a nice outside move to get that release, get to the corner route, and Burroughs drops it over his shoulder. Well, that offense had been spinning its tires three consecutive two and outs until that 98-yard drive. Greg Ellingson looks like a keeper came into the game ranked 10th in receiving in the CFL in his rookie year. First TD. Kanji the boot. And Sanders starts at the 20. First contact doesn't bring him down. Neither does the second. And finally, Mark Beswick will get Sanders to the turf up at the 34-yard line. So Drew Willey, under the tutelage of George Cortez, gets set to go back to work. Still holds school records at University of Buffalo with the Bulls for completion attempts. His career yardage.